what happens with vectors in 3D? Remember we got these things called unit vectors. Every non-zero vector has a corresponding unit vector, which basically is going in the same direction, just with length one. And we had this formula. The beautiful thing about writing it this way is it does not matter how many dimensions the vector has. So pushing the idea through, it's still going to be the same regardless. I mean, you could keep going to four dimensions, five dimensions, six dimensions. It would still be the same formula. So everything we saw when we looked at vectors in two dimensions, those formulas hold. We had two special unit vectors, you'll remember, in two dimensions, the i and the j. Well, now we're going to have three, and they are what's called orthogonal. Basically, it means each of those vectors are 90 degrees to the other. They're orthogonal, mutually perpendicular. We'll define them to be in the same orientation as the Cartesian space. Because if you think of those three axes, they are 90 degrees to each other. So it makes life easier. So in the x direction, which we saw in two dimensions, we're going to define that one to be i. In the y direction, we'll define that to be j. And no prizes for guessing what's going to happen in the z direction. We'll call that one k. They're going to be our three unit vectors. The component form of a position vector. There's our position vector x, y, z. I'll just call it the vector u. As a position vector, it's op. Again, no difference. Head minus tail. Doesn't matter how many dimensions it's in, the vector will always be head minus star. But now I could write it as an ordered triple. Again, not a fan of that one because it gets confused. Am I talking about the vector or am I talking about the point? But it is a valid way of writing a vector. I prefer a column vector because then it's very clear what we're talking about. But now we'll have x, y, and z. And of course you could break it up into its three components and write it that way. x in the i direction, y in the j direction, z in the k direction. The length of the vector, again, we just push from two dimensions to three dimensions, we'll add in the z. So it's the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Direction becomes a little bit more interesting because <coughs> if you remember direction is like slope and in two dimensions we'd say well that's rise over run. Well now when you're talking about three dimensions what's rise, what's run and we've got this other direction as well. We'll talk more about directions of these vectors later. But right, let's just look at a simple problem. Same sort of problem we saw in two dimensions. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. You can still have a parallelogram floating in three dimensions. The coordinates of A, B, and D are the ones they've given us there. We have to find, first of all, the vectors A, B, and A, D. Just head minus tail. So A, B, but I'll write it as a column vector. So 1848 minus 423. There's the vector AB, 14, 2, 5. And there's the vector AD, again, head minus tail, minus 5, 10, 10. So again, the same thing we did in two dimensions, we're just pushing it through to a third dimension. So what were the coordinates of CB? Okay, it's a parallelogram. Opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal, but if I think of them as vectors, that means the vectors are equal, because they'll have the same direction, they're parallel, they'll have the same length. It's a parallelogram. So I'm saying the vector AB is equal to the vector DC, which means head minus tail will equal head minus tail. I swap them round because I know I'm going to end up making C the subject, but it doesn't really matter, I mean, they're equal. Rearrange that and make C the subject. Well, C will equal B minus A plus D. So C will equal, there are those three, I've written them as uh, position vectors, 1848 minus 423 minus 112, 13, and there is 13, 14, 18. That's as a vector, they ask for the coordinates. All right, I'll rewrite it as coordinates. C is 13, 14, 18. The vision of an interval, here's an interesting use of vectors. Okay, we know midpoint, and midpoint is when you divide in the ratio one to one. But of course you can divide in any ratio you like. You can also divide internally or externally. Here's an interval AB and P is in the middle. So it's divided this interval up into a certain ratio. Let's say it's M to N. Now if they say it divides AB in the ratio M to N, the naming is important. That means from A to P would be M parts, from P to B would be N parts. So it's going in the same direction there. Of course, I could have said this the same way. P divides BA internally in the ratio N to M. Again, it all comes down to the naming. If I'd name the interval BA, then the ratio would be N to M rather than N to N. That's internal. Well, what's an external division then? Well, it's if you produce the line out. So I'll produce it this way. So I've gone from A to B, produced it out to P. 
P still divides this ratio, but it's externally in the ratio M to N. But it still means that from P to A is M parts, and from P to B is N parts. That doesn't change. Now, if P divides AB in the ratio M to N, then this is what ends up happening. The vector, if I think of it as a vector now, the position vector of P will be 1 over M plus N, so you add the two numbers together, outside of n times a plus m times b. So basically what I do is I swap if the order is going to be n times a and m times b. So that visually they've swapped rounds. So let's try one. We'll do an internal division. So p divides the interval joining these ones internally in the ratio 1 to 3. So bang, there it is. The bottom of the fraction are the two numbers added together. So 3 and 1 is 4. The top of the fraction, I get the ratio, swap it round. So it becomes 3 quarters times that first vector, 1 quarter times the second vector, and then it's just a bit of calculation, and we get this lovely vector. 1, 9 on 2, 3 on 2. If they're asking for the coordinates of the point, then I'll rewrite it as 1, 9 on 2, 3, 2. So that's how you'd handle an internal one. External division can be thought of as a negative ratio. So when they tell me it divides externally in the ratio 5 to 2, then I'll do it exactly the same as an internal division. I just make one of those numbers negative, and it doesn't matter which one. A negative ratio is like a negative fraction. It doesn't matter whether the numerator is negative or the denominator is negative. It's negative. So we do the same here. All right, I'm going to make it... 5 to negative 2. I'd made the 2 negative. So now I set it up. Bottom of the fraction are the two numbers added together. But now I'm adding 5 with negative 2. I'll, I'll get 3 on the bottom of the fraction. And then I swap the numbers. So negative 2 goes on the top of the first one. 5 goes on the top of the second one. Playing around with it, we get 13, 4, negative 9. And notice this one says find the position vector. It didn't say find the coordinates of the point. So I'm happy to just leave it as a column vector. So there's a little introduction to playing with vectors in three dimensions.